at this image, I'm going to bump up the color temperature just a little bit to uh, give her some nice warm skin tones, and then go ahead and open the image. I like to work on a nice big image, so I'm going to enlarge it to fill my screen. And now let's go ahead and tweak the levels on this image. It, it was just a little bit underexposed. We're going to bring the white slider down to the beginning of of the hump there. We're going to bring the black slider up and we're ready to go. First thing I'd like to do here is just make this Glamour Girl a little more glamorous by liquefying some of the elements on her body here. So just going to bring her tummy in a little bit and I'm going to slim underneath her arms and slim her arms just a hair. This isn't something that you would notice, but it makes a huge difference. If you do absolutely nothing else, liquefying an image, always go in and slim those arms down just a little bit. It really makes a huge difference in, uh, in how the image ends up looking. When you tuck a belly in, don't forget that you're probably going to make a little bit of a difference in the elements of her body that are next to it, so I need to slim her arm down a little bit as well to keep it from looking abnormal. A couple more little tweaks here bringing her wrist back in. Oh, that looks like a little much. Undo that. Step it back a little bit. Slim her face down just a little bit. This is a young girl. She's only 17 years old. She still has a little bit of that round baby face, so in order to make her just a tinge more glamorous, slim down her face just a little bit. Again, a key when you liquefy is always to keep the lines straight. Those would be zipper lines, belt lines. This will help make it, uh, keep it from making it really noticeable that, that you've enhanced the image with a liquefy. Click OK. It will return my result. There we go. See our after of liquefy. Nothing major, but just keeps your eye from, from focusing on a few of those little flaws. Okay, this picture was shot a little bit off the edge, so I'm going to clone stamp in some edge. I'm also going to have to go back and clone stamp in where we saw some of the white background from liquefying. There, now I've got a nice clean image. Now let's have a real nice close look at the image. I'm going to work on the face first. I'm going to get rid of some of the blemishes. Again, she's 17. She's got a typical teenager's face. So in order to make her glamorous, we're gonna, I'm using the spot healing brush here in a normal mode with a fairly soft brush. Cho choosing the uh, patch tool here just for some of these bigger pieces. And patch tool is great for the under eye. Pull it to a nice clean patch of skin and then always fade it. Uh, I needed to fade that a little more. So I'll step back, do it again. And she's young. So 50% will just give her a nice clean under eye look. Missed a little spot. Patch that. Patch some of the more visible lines that I created. Now I know in this one that I need to be down about 50%. And that still leaves a little bit of that line under her eye from her smile, which is normal and natural, but cleans it up. Now I'm going to take Dodge Tool and whiten the whites of her eyes and her teeth. Now burning in the outline of her eye, which we did on a previous tutorial. C couple more things I missed with a spot healing brush. Oops, go back, fix that. Just a light touch. I use a Wacom tablet with a pen, which is makes this really easy. Go back to a full screen mode. Good, nice clean face. I like it. A couple major moles and blemishes that I can see. In full screen mode, go ahead and fix those. And I'm going to duplicate my layer and add a diffuse glow to the duplicate layer. I do it high and then I fade it. Always take it to luminosity mode to get back to that normal skin, golden color skin tone, and fade it to where you like it. This picture is, is not a super dark image and she's a young girl, so a little bit of diffuse glow, about 13%, is great. Then I put on a layer mask. And diffuse glow often, I, I like to see it on the face and chest. I don't like to see a forearm or a hand glow. So in, in my layer mask, I go back and take out the diffuse glow that was applied to those areas I don't want to call attention to. In a glamour image, you want to call attention to the face and chest. 
I got it where I like it, so I'll merge those layers. Now I duplicate the layer again to create another copy. I apply a surface blur um, with a high radius and a high threshold. This gives you a super blurry image, but then um, I, I find I like to have this and then have the luxury of going back with my fade tool and my opacity in order to, to get it exactly where I want it. Let me see, that's, that's, uh, that's about where I want it. I can always fade it a little more in the opacity of the layer itself. This also helps me to see a nice clear definition of the edges. If I keep that, that blur a little higher than I know I'm going to want it. So I'm going to bring all her clothing back, bring her jewelry back, bring her fingernails back. T real telltale sign that you've used blur if you don't bring these details back. Go ahead and bring back her hair, especially around her face. You can sometimes leave the hair that's blending off into the background a little bit blurry, especially if there's a lot of flyaways. It helps keep drawing, keep your uh, from drawing the eye to those. Make sure I get them all around her face really well. I'm gonna take a good close look now to do her eye. Make sure you get the eye and the eyebrow when you're painting out the out that surface blur effect. Get all the way to the corner of your eye. I mean, sorry, the corner of the mouth, the corner of the lips, and all the teeth. Sometimes I see other photographers forgetting to get those eyebrows when then it's a real telltale sign that, that the image has had surface blur applied. Turn off the layer, turn it back on to see the effect of the color. Now, in order to be able to s see the line of her chin, I take my brush, I turn my brush gray, which gives me about a 50% opacity in my paint back just to bring some definition back to her jawline. I like it. Merge those layers. Create a duplicate layer once more. And now to finish off the image, really important to vignette the edges. I've found this really just helps the subject in the center of your image pop. So uh, this she fills a lot of the screen, so I sent the midpoint higher vignette to about 70%. Again, you can always fade that vignette if you need to because it's coming into her face a little bit, I go ahead and apply another layer mask and bring back her face so that that vignette is not showing up on her face. Have a close look to make sure I don't have a line from the vignette in her hair. Get back on my layer mask and take some of that off there. And just a swipe of my brush is going to help me make sure that I don't have any of that darkening effect of that vignette applied to the areas of her face and chest. Okay, merge my layers back down and I'm just going to burn the edges a little bit darker. Real low exposure. Oftentimes the vignette doesn't get the sides of the image as well as it, uh, does it does the corners of the image. So with a real low exposure on your burn tool and a nice big fat soft brush you can kind of enhance the effect of that vignette. I like it, so I'm going to go ahead and finish off by sharpening the image. Usually a little over 100%. At about one pixel is good. Then I always go ahead and fade it into luminosity mode and just take it back a little bit off 100%. I like it, so I'm going to go ahead and save my image. My high res image I always like to call print, so I remember that that's an image that's print quality. And then I always like to go in, I've created an action that resizes for web the way I like it. And I'm going to go ahead and resize for web. Look at it, the size of the actual print. And I like it, so I save this as a SFW, which is my term for save for web image, as a JPEG. Now I've got both of those images saved alongside my original CR2. And that's it. Join us next time for another basic Photoshop retouching for a glamour shot.